Hello everyone, today's video covers the most frequently asked Python interview questions and answers for both freshers and experienced candidates. We'll also include coding questions with examples. First question, what do you know about Python? And what are the important features of Python? Python is a versatile, high-level, general-purpose programming language known for its readability and simplicity. Important features of Python Interpreted, Python code is executed line by line, making it easier to debug and test. Dynamically typed, you don't need to declare variable types beforehand. Object-oriented, supports object-oriented programming concepts for building complex applications. Rich standard library, offers a vast collection of modules for various tasks, reducing development time. Cross-platform compatibility, runs smoothly on Windows, Mac OS, Linux, and other operating systems. Readability, Python's emphasis on code readability enhances maintainability and collaboration. Extensive community and support, a large, active community contributes to Python's growth and provides ample resources. Why is Python considered more important compared to other programming languages? Python is favored due to its simplicity, readability, and versatility across various domains like web development, data science, automation, and AI. Its extensive libraries, active community, and cross-platform support make it an ideal choice for both beginners and experienced developers, offering rapid development and ease of learning. Is Python a programming language or a scripting language? Python is both a programming and scripting language. It can be used for scripting tasks, like automating repetitive actions, and for full-scale application development, including web apps, data analysis, and software development. Thanks to its versatility and extensive libraries. Programming language, generally used for complex software development, requiring compilation and linking before execution. Scripting language, typically interpreted, used for automating tasks or writing small programs. How is Python an interpreted language? Python is an interpreted language because its code is executed line by line by the Python interpreter, rather than being compiled into machine code beforehand. This allows for immediate execution and easier debugging, as changes to the code can be tested without recompilation. What is PEP8, and why is it important? PEP8 is the Python enhancement proposal that provides guidelines for writing clean and readable Python code. Adhering to PEP8 ensures consistency and helps improve the readability of code. What is the difference between lists, tuples, and dictionaries? Lists, used for storing ordered collections of items that need to be modified. Ordered and mutable collection of items. Allows duplicates. Accessed by index. Defined using square brackets. Here is the example. Tuples, used for storing ordered collections of items that should not be changed. Ordered and immutable collection of items. Allows duplicates. Accessed by index. Defined using parentheses. Here is the example. Dictionaries, used for storing key value pairs and you need to access data by a specific key. Unordered collection of key value pairs. Keys must be unique. Accessed by key. Defined using curly braces. Here is the example. What the difference between break, continue, and pass statements in Python? These keywords are used to control the flow of execution within loops in Python. Break. Terminates the loop entirely. Execution continues after the loop. Here is the example. This code will print numbers from 0 to 4, and then the loop will be terminated when I reaches 5. Continue. Skips the rest of the current iteration of the loop. Execution jumps to the beginning of the next iteration. Here is the example. This code will print 0, 1, 3, and 4, skipping the iteration where i is 2. Pass. Does nothing. Often used as a placeholder when a statement is syntactically required but no action is needed. Here is the example. This is commonly used when defining empty functions or classes as a starting point. In summary. Break exits the entire loop. Continue skips the rest of the current loop iteration. Pass does nothing, serving as a placeholder. What is the difference between equals equals and is operators in Python? Equals equals checks if values of two objects are equal. Is checks if two variables refer to the same object in memory. How Python handles memory management. Python uses automatic memory management with reference counting and a built-in garbage collector to free up memory that is no longer in use. 
How do you handle exceptions in Python? Exceptions are handled using try except blocks. The try block contains code that might throw an exception, while the accept block contains code to handle the exception. Here is the example. What are arguments, generators, and decorators in Python? Arguments are the values passed to functions when they are called. They allow functions to perform operations with different inputs. Generators are a type of iterable that allow you to iterate over a sequence of values without storing the entire sequence in memory. They are defined using functions with yield statements. Use yield instead of return to produce a value and pause the function's state. Decorators are functions that modify the behavior of another function or method. They are used to add functionality to existing code in a clean and reusable way. Decorators are defined with the add decorator name syntax above a function definition. What is the difference between a shallow copy and a deep copy in Python? Shallow copy creates a new object but inserts references into it to the objects found in the original. Deep copy creates a new object and recursively copies all objects found in the original. Example using the copy module. Import copy. How do you handle errors in Python? Errors in Python are handled using exception handling mechanisms with try, accept, else, and finally blocks. Here's how each block works. Try block contains the code that might raise an exception. Accept block catches and handles the exception if it occurs. You can specify different exceptions to handle different types of errors. Else block, optional, executes if no exceptions were raised in the try block. Finally block, optional, executes regardless of whether an exception was raised, useful for cleanup actions. What is the scope and lifetime of variables in Python? In Python, the scope and lifetime of variables are key concepts that determine where and how long a variable exists and can be accessed in your code. Scope Local scope, variables defined within a function or block are local to that function or block. They are only accessible inside the function where they are defined. Global scope, variables defined outside any function or block are in the global scope. They can be accessed from anywhere in the code, including inside functions, unless shadowed by a local variable with the same name. Enclosing scope, variables in enclosing functions, nested functions, are accessible to the inner functions but not vice versa. This is relevant in nested functions or closures. Built-in scope, contains built-in names and functions, e.g., print, len, that are available in any scope. Lifetime. Local variables, exist as long as the function or block in which they are defined is executing. They are destroyed once the function or block exits. Global variables, exist for the duration of the program's execution. They are created when the program starts and destroyed when the program ends. How are arguments passed by value or by reference in Python? Python uses neither pass-by-value nor pass-by-reference exclusively. Instead, it employs a concept called pass-by-object reference. Immutable objects, like numbers, strings, Immutable objects, like numbers, strings, and tuples, behave as if passed by value, as changes within a function don't affect the original object. Mutable objects, like lists and dictionaries, can be modified within a function, and these changes are reflected in the original object. Essentially, Python passes a reference to the object, but the behavior depends on whether the object is mutable or immutable. How do you debug a Python program? Debugging is an essential part of programming. Here are some common techniques. Print statements. Simple but effective, insert print statements to check variable values at different points in your code. Python debugger, PDB. Interactive debugging, use the PDB module for more control over the debugging process. Set breakpoints, step through code, inspect variables, and more. IDEs and debuggers. Visual tools, most IDEs, like PyCharm, Visual Studio Code, have built-in debuggers with features like breakpoints, stepping, and variable inspection. Logging. Record information. Use the logging module to record messages about your code's behavior, helping in troubleshooting. Unit testing. Description. Write unit tests using frameworks like Unitist or PyTest to test individual components of your code and ensure they work correctly. Exception handling. Description, use try and accept blocks to catch and handle exceptions, allowing you to debug and manage errors gracefully. How do you write a function in Python? A function in Python is defined using the def keyword followed by the function name and parentheses. What are list comprehensions in Python? Provide an example. 
List comprehensions provide a concise way to create lists. It consists of brackets containing an expression followed by a for clause. Example. Can you explain event-driven programming in Python? Event-driven programming is a programming paradigm where the flow of the program is determined by events like user actions, sensor outputs, or messages from other programs. What is the difference between pickling and unpickling? Pickling and unpickling are processes in Python for serializing and deserializing objects, respectively. Pickling, the process of converting a Python object into a byte stream, a serialized format, that can be stored in a file or transferred over a network. Pickling converts a Python object into a format that can be stored or transmitted. Unpickling, the process of converting a byte stream, serialized format, back into a Python object. It reconstructs the original object from its serialized form. Unpickling converts the stored or transmitted format back into a Python object. Explain the concept of functions and their types, built-in, user-defined, lambda. Functions in Python are blocks of reusable code that perform specific tasks. They help in organizing code, reducing redundancy, and improving readability. 1. Built-in functions. Predefined functions provided by Python, such as print, len, and range, which perform common tasks. 2. User-defined functions. Functions created by the user using the def keyword to perform custom tasks. 3. Lambda functions. Anonymous functions defined using the lambda keyword for short, simple operations. How can we implement functional programming in Python? Functional programming in Python can be achieved by using higher-order functions, functions that accept other functions as arguments, anonymous functions, lambda functions, and built-in functions like map, filter, and reduce. Immutable data structures and avoiding side effects also align with functional programming principles. What is a lambda function in Python? How does it differ from a regular function? Lambda functions are anonymous, single-expression functions defined using the lambda keyword. They're ideal for short, simple operations. Regular functions have names, can span multiple lines, and are defined using the def keyword. Explain the difference between at static method and at class method in Python. At static method. No implicit arguments. Doesn't require an instance or class. Used for utility functions related to the class. At class method. Take CLS as the first argument can access and modify class state. Often used for alternative constructors or class level operations. What are the core principles of OOP? Object-oriented programming, OOP, is a programming paradigm that revolves around the concept of objects. These objects contain data, attributes, and code, methods, that operate on that data. The core principles of OOP are Encapsulation, this principle involves bundling data and methods that operate on that data within a single unit, called a class. It protects data from accidental modification and misuse by hiding the implementation details. Inheritance, this allows you to create new classes, derived classes, by inheriting properties and methods from existing classes, base classes. It promotes code reusability and hierarchical relationships between classes. Polymorphism, this refers to the ability of objects of different types to be treated as if they were of the same type. It enables you to write code that works with objects of different classes in a uniform way. Abstraction, this focuses on the essential features of an object, hiding unnecessary details. It simplifies the interface and makes the code easier to understand and use. What is method overriding and method overloading in Python? Method overriding, method overriding occurs when a subclass provides a specific implementation of a method that is already defined in its superclass. The subclass's method replaces the superclass's method. Method overloading, Python does not support method overloading in the traditional sense, having multiple methods with the same name but different parameters. Instead, you can use default arguments or variable length arguments to achieve similar functionality. What are metaclasses in Python, and how are they used? Metaclasses are classes of classes, they define how classes behave. A class is an instance of its metaclass. Metaclasses allow for the modification or creation of classes dynamically. E explain the concept of duck typing in Python. Duck typing is a programming style which does not look at an object's type to determine if it has the right interface. Instead, the method or attribute is simply called or used, if it looks like a duck and quacks like a duck, it's a duck. What are coroutines in Python, and how do they differ from generators? Coroutines are generalized forms of subroutines. 
They can pause their execution and resume later, allowing for cooperative multitasking. In Python, coroutines are a type of generator that can consume values, using send, in addition to producing them. Explain the GIL, Global Interpreter Lock, in Python and its impact on multithreading? The Global Interpreter Lock, GIL, is a mechanism in Python that ensures only one thread can execute Python bytecode at a time. It's essentially a lock that prevents multiple threads from accessing Python objects simultaneously. Impact on multithreading While Python supports multithreading, the GIL significantly limits its effectiveness for CPU-bound tasks. Since only one thread can hold the GIL at a time, multiple threads in a Python program often end up waiting for their turn to acquire the lock, negating the benefits of parallel processing. What is the purpose of the yield keyword, and how does it differ from return? The yield keyword is used in a function to make it a generator. It allows the function to return an iterator that can produce a sequence of values lazily, one at a time, rather than computing all values at once and returning them in a list. What is the concept of monkey patching in Python? Monkey patching refers to the practice of modifying or extending code at runtime, often by altering existing classes or methods. This can be useful for quick fixes or adjustments but should be done carefully as it can lead to maintenance challenges and unexpected behavior. Write a Python program to check if a number is prime or not. This program checks whether a given number is prime, determining if it has only two distinct divisors. Final output, 23 is prime, true. How do you find the factorial of a number using recursion? This program calculates the factorial of a number using recursion, repeatedly multiplying the number by decreasing integers. Output, factorial of 5 is, 120. Write a Python program to reverse a string. This program reverses a given string, rearranging its characters from the last to the first position. Output. Reversed string, a la. Explain string manipulation methods with examples. String manipulation in Python involves various methods that allow you to modify and work with strings in different ways. How do you create a list of squares of numbers from 1 to 10? This program creates a list containing squares of numbers from 1 to 10, showcasing basic list comprehension. Write a program to find the largest and smallest number in a list. This program finds the largest and smallest numbers in a list, identifying the minimum and maximum values. Final output in this program. Largest number, 23. Smallest number, 4. How would you find the second largest number in a list without sorting? To find the second largest number in a list without sorting, you can iterate through the list while keeping track of the largest and second largest numbers found so far. Write a Python program to check if a given string is a palindrome. A string is a palindrome if it reads the same forwards and backwards. Explanation. Convert the string to lowercase to make the check case insensitive. Use slicing s, colon colon dash 1, to reverse the string and compare it with the original string. Output. Is radar a palindrome? True. How do you remove duplicate elements from a list? To remove duplicates, you can use a set which inherently eliminates duplicate values, and then convert it back to a list. Python program. Explanation. Convert the list to a set to remove duplicates. Convert the set back to a list to maintain list structure. Output. List after removing duplicates. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5.